I don't know about you, but I love that MVC pattern. And the idea of these controllers that were organized around certain business objects or logic, it really made sense to my brain. But with that said, there has been an explosion of new ways to build APIs with ASP.NET. From minimal APIs to other tools out there, we're gonna go through them and talk about the pros and cons of each and which one would be right for you. First, let's talk about controllers because they are the bread and butter of ASP.NET web development. Whether you're doing front ends or APIs, if you're a developer who hasn't really focused on the web but are now coming over, the controllers will really kind of feel natural. That separation of concerns kind of mentality will feel right at home to you. Of course, if you're building an API that needs Swagger or open API support, being able to just add your documentation to code comments and having those pulled right out is just chef's kiss, good stuff. Rarely is our code that simple. We're usually gonna be injecting something, whether it's an entity framework context or a logging system or, or a ton of different services of your own or, or third party. That's where our first con comes in with controllers. With dependency injection, it's on a controller level. So even if you have endpoints in that controller that don't use that service, the server is still spinning up that resource as if you would need it. Of course, if you're trying to optimize your overhead, those dependency injected services are normally not the first place you're gonna need to optimize. A benefit to using controllers is the built-in open API and Swagger support. Man, that is nice if you need it. Next up is minimal API. Now, this is a newer approach to building APIs, and if you're from JavaScript world or Python world, the fluent nature of this is gonna feel a lot more comfortable to you. I spent a few years there in, in TypeScript land, and honestly, coming back to .NET, the minimal APIs felt a little more natural to me than MVC. Here's an example of those same controller-based endpoints written in minimal API. One of the things you'll notice right away is the conciseness of this syntax. And one of the things I really appreciate is the fact that we inject our dependencies directly into the method we need them in. As for documentation, minimal API does support open API and, and Swagger documentation, but it's a lot more invasive to our code. It's not just a matter of comments. I'll show you an example here where you, you actually have to do some work around it. Another downside is if you're not returning typed results, you'll have to document those specifically. In addition to the Microsoft supported methods we just talked about, there are a plethora of community-driven frameworks that are just as good, if not sometimes better. Fast endpoints is one of those. And with benchmarks that are on par or in some cases better than minimal API, you should check it out next time you're building an API. A similarity between minimal API and fast endpoints is that they both use that fluent syntax. But unlike a minimal API, which expects all those endpoints to live in one class, fast endpoints expects you to have each endpoint as its own class. Those endpoint classes also define their own DTO response and request objects. And like minimal API, you'll use that fluent syntax to define those open API and swagger documentation points. So why would you use fast endpoints instead of minimal API? Oh man, it's because fast endpoints has so many features already baked in. Things like rate limiting, caching, throttling, uh, pre and post processors, and a lot more. Those are things that you would normally either write your own or bring in a third party dependency for via NuGet for minimal API. So if you have a background in JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, or functional programming, minimal APIs or fast endpoints are gonna feel more natural to you versus the controller-based method. Another point of consideration is documentation. If you have to support Swagger or open API documentation, the controller-based method is a lot easier to document than the fluent-based approaches of fast endpoints or minimal API. In the end, all are valid and welcome additions to the .NET ecosystem. I would suggest trying something with each of them and finding which one fits best with you and your team and your processes and patterns. What kind of frameworks and libraries are you using to build your APIs? I love this stuff, so let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time.